Hey, welcome to Captain B Garage. Um, today we're going to talk about how a SeaDoo two-stroke engine works. Um, I've had a lot of people in the past ask me, they're saying it's a Rotex engine. It's, it's a Mazda Winkle engine. Well, no, it's a rota rotary valve engine. And what it means by rotary valve is on some two-stroke engines, <coughs> they have reed valves where it pulls in the gas and as the piston comes down it has these valves that open and close to pull in the gas and then when the piston comes down it shuts and they're just little flaps that's all they are well see do makes a rotary valve engine and what that is is you see this plate here that turns this is your valve and what happens is as your piston now the way a two-stroke engine works on these is as your piston goes up, it pulls from the underneath of the piston, it pulls the gas in, the air and gas mixture into underneath the piston. And then as it turns, it's pulling in the gas and air. As it turns, this is now closing that port. And now underneath the piston is all that gas and air. So when the piston comes down, the piston's coming down now, it's pushing that air around to the top of the piston. So that's how the air gets into the actual chamber, the air and fuel mixture. So what's happening is now as the piston's coming down, this is blocked off and that all that air that's trapped inside there is getting pushed around to the top of the cylinder to be burnt for a power stroke. So that's what they mean by a rotary valve, is this opens and closes these chambers underneath each piston. Um, so that's the way this normally works, and this is a, again a two-stroke, uh, two-cylinder SeaDo engine. This is actually a 657X that I pulled out. Um, so now I'm just going to talk about how the actual carburetors work and how fuel pump works on these, because it's all into. Okay, we're back. I had my little helper over here join us. This is Juliana. Say hi. <laughs> And this is my little helper. All right, so what we have is we have the 657X engine. I showed you how the rotary valve works. It's not a Winkle engine. It's not a rotary engine. It's an actual rotary valve. So now what happens is here's your carburetors. These are Mokini uh, carburetors. And they're typical carburetors with jets on them. Uh, you got a high-speed jet and a low-speed jet. Um, you know, nothing really fancy about them. But what if you look on the back of here, this is where your fuel circuit is. This is your actual fuel pump. And these jet skis, they don't have a fuel pump like you would think in a gas engine where it's in the uh, fuel tank and it sends fuel to. The pump is actually on the carburetor itself. And the way that works is you have this one here. If you look, see how this block is a little bit taller than this one? This one here is the actual pump, and what it is, it's a little diaphragm that goes up and down, and it pulls fuel into here, and then pushes it into both carburetors. The way it works is, when this is connected, it connects onto this port right here, and this is the underneath of the piston in the crankcase. So as this piston goes up and down, it creates a pulsating positive and negative pressure. Well, that transmits to here, where this diaphragm is going to go up and down, up and down, and pull the fuel. So what happens is, on this port gets connected Daddy. to here. Yes, princess. Mama, I'm going to get another chocolate bar. Okay, she's going to go get another chocolate bar. Um, and then I'll come right back. Okay, and you come right back and help us. Okay. Um, so this is the back side of the diaphragm. So what's happening is, on this back side, you're creating a negative and positive environment where it's fluctuating up and down and pulling the fuel in and it creates a pressure you know upward of 20 30 pounds uh, when you pull these off <coughs> it's got a spring inside the carburetors I'll do a whole rebuild on the carburetors because these are are really nasty I can't even get these screws out and that's most of these um, most of these see to any these engines really uh, they're just so gunked up with salt water and crust and everything you can't get them out uh, so we're going to do another uh, video of how to pull it apart. Sorry, I had another interruption. Everybody wants to uh, bother me today while I'm doing this. Um, 
Yeah, so we're going to do it. So these things, they just gum up. And to take one of these engines apart and the carburetors and everything, it's just, it's just so corroded. I did have bolts here somewhere. It's just so corroded, corroded with salt water because these are stainless steel bolts and this whole engine's aluminum. So when you get the stainless steel and salt water and aluminum together, it just it, it just corrodes. Uh, so I can't even show you one of the bolts here. It had all these white powder on it, and it just it just bonds itself to it. So I'm actually gonna try, and I'm gonna let you guys ha know how it goes. I'm gonna try and do something. Again, this is all aluminum, so it's not gonna rust. So what I'm gonna try and do is actually because this is just a project I'm playing with is I'm going to try and boil this. I actually put it in the outside of the house, put in a pot of boiling water, because that's what they used to do. They used to dip engines and boil them to clean them up and get the grease off and stuff. I'm going to try and boil it to see if it expands and gets all that salt down. So I'll let you guys know how it works. I'm going to try it with this first and then um, I might actually do that with this engine and just dip it in a big vat of boiling water and to see if it actually comes apart easier. Because I, I pull these things apart and you'll snap all these bolts very easily and then the to get these out and drill them and tap them it's just a real pain and um you know you're gonna have to get new jugs and everything else like that these are the ones that normally snap on these 657x engines the ones for the jugs they they usually pretty good because they're on the other underside where the gas and oil is um but that's pretty much it so that's how an actual sea do two-stroke engine works so you got the yamahas the other ones they have the reed valves uh, that's why they're not called uh, rot rotary engines, rot rotary valve engines. Um, but yeah, this is just the sea dues and this is just in the 90s. And they went to fuel injection, and they got did away with it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's how that works. That's how the fuel circuit works on this. Like I said, the fuel just goes right to here and creates a pulsating. And uh, that's it. Um, just a little update on the sea dew jet boat. I'm doing the upholstery now. The seats I'm pulling apart and reupholstering them. Uh, that's why I got in the background right here. It's that yellow there. Uh, here's what it looks like. And this is what it was. So I'm doing the whole upholstery on it and everything. Um, I'm going to show a video of that. I just was playing around trying to get stuff done. Um, I painted some of it, the engine hatch. Uh, I want to do a two-tone. Like I said, we're going to do a yellow and black. So the engine hatch I painted yellow. And I used this, um, this Interlux bright side roll and tip paint. And uh, it works pretty good. I'm, I'm very happy with it. it it's, uh, I want to do a test before I did a video on it because I, I just wanted to see what do's and don'ts with this. And uh, so far it, it worked pretty good. I had to do some wet sand because I wanted that really clean, clean finish. So any, any type, you know, I, I do wet sand no matter what uh, just to get that nice finish. You start doing wet sand with uh, 1500, 2000 grit, it's going to come out beautiful. So I rolled and tipped that, uh, but I'm going to show a video on how to roll and tip the underside of it where the hull is going to be black and the top I did some stuff yellow. So I'm going to show a video on that. Uh, we're going to do a video on upholstery. I got my little man over here too. Hi. And uh, uh, we got another project coming too. <clears throat> I want to get this out of here quick because we have another project. I purchased a 1989 military Humvee, an M998 from GovPlanet.com. So I won the auction, I purchased it. So that's gonna come in here and we got a lot of projects to do with that. As you can see behind me, little man over there. Uh, also behind me underneath this, you can see I got my 57 Bel Air convertible. So we're gonna be doing projects on that too. So we got a lot of stuff going on at, uh, at the garage here. Um, little man just fell. Oh, come on, up. All right. Uh, so that's it for now. So we're going to do updates on uh, different projects. I'll let you know how this works out as far as boiling it and uh, see if it actually loosens all the bolts off. And as you can hear, I got to go. All right. Remember, like, prove my wife wrong, and that's it.